Welcome, family, to our online service. It is going to be absolutely amazing. So I want to encourage you right before we head into the heat of it to like, subscribe, follow us on our multiple social media platforms. You do not want to miss out on our weekly announcements and pretty much getting to know what is happening in the week. So family, I just want to take a second to say thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for giving and faithfully sowing into this ministry. And I just want to pray over each and every single offering. So thank you, God, that you are faithful. Thank you that you are our source and that you're a giver of, of all things. So I just want to thank you, God, for each and every single person that is sowing faithfully into this ministry and seek to grow, God. I thank you that your blessing is over them. And I thank you, Lord, that as we're about to even go into the word, that our hearts and ears will be open and ready to receive what you have in store for us. So I thank you for your amazing amazing and abundant blessing in the mighty name of jesus amen family enjoy the service it's going to be amazing tag a friend grab a family member sit around and enjoy Oh, uh -huh. 
And welcome back to uh, the second part in uh, our series about righteousness, peace, and joy. Uh, I'm going to read the scripture to you once again. It's in Romans 14, verse 17. And it says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, so far we have settled that the kingdom of God is firstly de designed or defined as uh, righteousness. And uh, that means that, that uh, you know, because of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross, he established righteousness for us. He placed us in a place that we can have access into an intimate relationship with God. It is that perfect harmony of breathing in grace and breathing out praise. The kingdom of God starts with uh, righteousness, but then almost naturally it follows. And what follows is peace. The moment we are righteous with God, then peace follows naturally. And there are different areas in our life where we experience peace. First, it's peace with God. Secondly, it's peace in ourselves and with ourselves. And then thirdly, peace with others. And I just want to briefly touch on all three of these before I'm going to enter with a practical, something practical again. So let's pray. Father, we want to come before you and and we want to pray this morning, Lord, as peace as might sound like something weak or it might sound like something insignificant. Lord, you knew that each and every one of us would need peace in our lives just to function, to live this Christian life, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to have energy and, and to have motivation to get up in the morning. And I want to pray that you will bring a new and a fresh understanding for us when it comes to peace today. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I can tell you what peace is not. Uh, I experienced it one day when I lost my phone. I was uh, in a coffee shop in a town, 30, 40 minutes drive from my house. And the moment that I stopped at, at, at my house, I realized my phone wasn't with me. So, you know, I, I was asking the Holy Spirit, uh, if he knew, and I was kind of hoping he would say, you know, look at in a, in your door or look at your handbag or whatever, but I couldn't find it. And I just heard these four words in, in my spirit, toilet, coffee shop. And I just realized I left it in the in the bathroom, uh, in the coffee shop. And uh, it's, a, it's an iPhone 12, and I still had two and a half years contract that I had still had on this phone. And so it was for me, it was, um, you know, a little bit of a stressful situation. Uh, so... Uh, I had my friend with me and uh, and we decided we're going to phone my phone. And first time it rang and the second time it went to voicemail. You know, when that happened, it's kind of you kind of sure that it is stolen. So I suddenly I was worried. I was upset. I was stressed. And uh, just to kind of summarize it all, I was out of peace. Not, neither my thoughts nor my emotions was in one place. It's just all over the place. I was out of peace. So I want to ask you, what is your picture of peace? If you think about peace or a place of tranquility, you know, what do you imagine? Is that, uh, you know, that peace sign that's on a guitar of a guy with long hair, you know, protesting against war uh, like they had in the 60s, 70s? Or is it maybe, you know, like lying on a beach in Zanzibar? Or is it when your child, your children go to bed finally at night? That uh, that's how you define peace. You know, peace is normally that place where we say, if I can just be there, or, you know, then I will have peace. Or when this is over, then I will have peace. How do you define peace? What is that place of peace? James Allen said the following. He said, the more tranquil a man becomes, the greater is his success. His influence, his power for good. Calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. 
uh, you know, and I was uh, doing a, a little bit of research on, on anxiety and peace. And they found, uh, you know, in South Africa in 2018, and I was deliberately looking for statistics before COVID, um, you know, just how, how it looked like in our country. And uh, we found, they found that in 2018, that one out of six South Africans suffers from anxiety, depression and uh, substance abuse. If you go a little bit further and you look at the the UK, they also found in 2018 that uh, just over 6,000 people committed suicide in one year. That brings you to 16 people per day uh, that committed suicide that year. And there was a further 10 to 25 attempts uh, of people trying to take their lives. Anxiety leads to all sorts of mental health problems, but it also leads to a lot of physical diseases and physical problems. The list is long, but it includes uh, diseases like diabetes and heart attacks, heart problems. So if we want to know to not, each and every person, willingly or no, unknowingly, is looking for peace, looking for that place where they can just get away from, from anxiety and of the stresses, um, you know, that wants to pin you in a corner uh, on, on a daily level. If you Google, you will find sites like uh, seven ways how to find peace or 40 ways to find balance and inner peace. And these sites will tell you things like, you know, you need to do a little bit of yoga or go and walk in nature or to declutter your house or get a pet. And it's not like any of these are wrong. Obviously, it will help you temporarily, you know, like my can of cold drink was helping me on my way back to the coffee shop. But at the end of the day, there's only one source of peace, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the source of our peace. He's where peace begins, and he is where we find our peace. The prophet Isaiah was prophesying about Jesus, and he included a little bit of his job description, a little bit of his curic curriculum vitae in this verse, and it's in Isaiah 9 verse 6. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He's our Prince of Peace, the source of where we find, um, you know, our, our peace. Peace in the Greek, and I hope I translate it right, it, it, it is Irene, and that is where we get the English word serene from. It's a place of peacefulness and of rest and of, of tranquility. But this word, word irene, the, the meaning of it is to join. It's to become whole, to become together. So to have peace is to be in a place where my thoughts and my emotions are in one place. The moment I discovered that my phone wasn't with me, my thoughts and my emotions were all over the place. I couldn't figure out if I was sad or worried or, you know, should I make a plan to get another phone or shall I phone or who can I? It was just all over the place. And that place of, place of serenity or peace is where my emotions and where my thoughts come together and when that's together that is when we can function to our fullness and that is why it's so important to have peace in our lives so the road to real peace and it's i'm not talking about the temporary you know tranquilizers that the world is offering us is jesus christ and the, and the peace that he established for us and in us you know through his crucifixion and resurrection in Romans 5 is 1, it says the following, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. So because of Jesus Christ, we're not only righteous, but he became our source of peace. He's our prince of peace. What is interesting is Jesus, when he entered Jerusalem, um, you know, he entered on the back of a donkey and normally they would expect someone like him uh, you know to enter on a horseback because the moment you enter on horseback you're declaring war and you're declaring that you, you're here to take over but Jesus deliberately chose to enter on the back of a donkey because a donkey is a symbol of peace and and through that he announced that my kingdom is different I'm not here to make war I'm here my kingdom is a kingdom of peace and I'm going to rule and I'm going to reign through peace and that is why peace is so important. It's as if Jesus knew something uh, that, that humanity at that stage couldn't figure out, couldn't understand. And that was the importance of peace. 
hours before Jesus was crucified. Um, he had a conversation with his disciples while he, they enjoyed the, the last Passover meal. And uh, it was after Judas left the room. And, you know, like you can imagine, it was a little bit emotional and uh, probably a little bit of a thick atmosphere, or, you know, not sure. But in that moment when he left and everything became calm, Jesus shared his last really hard to heart talk uh, with his disciples. And in that conversation, amongst all the different things he shared, he said to them, and, uh, and we read it in John 14, verse 27, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or to be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. You can agree with me. You know, the kind of peace Jesus carried in his heart was the kind of peace that kept him on the cross. And that is the kind of peace that he left us with. That is the kind of peace. It's the kind of peace that was so strong that enabled his disciples to, for most of them to die a martyr's death. And that's the kind of peace that he left uh, you and me also today. Uh, we read in Philippians uh, six, 4 verse 6 to 7, and it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding. In other words, a, a peace that doesn't make sense. A peace that I experience in my heart regardless of what I see what's going on around me. The bombs can fall, missiles can fly physically or in the, you know, in the spirit. But there's a peace that goes beyond you know, what we would expect. That's the kind of peace that it's talking about here. It says a peace that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Peace is the God of our hearts. Like the gods, I don't know if you've ever seen it at Buckingham Palace, uh, you know, in the UK, you will see them. And uh, then in red and in black, all these, you know, tall black uh, head coverings or uh, things that were standing there and they would guard the palace and they would stand quietly but the moment something or someone would would cause or would look like a threat to the palace they would immediately make alarm and that's the same with peace in our hearts jesus said that peace it will guard our hearts it will it will be uh, that particular thing or, or um, you know that will the moment that something comes and threat the uh, it's a threat to the truth in our hearts peace will make alarm and it will it will definitely tell us that something is out of line, uh, you know, if compared with the truth of what God is telling us and, uh, you know, what he left us with. The moment that there, that there is a threat. So when we face a temptation, uh, you know, or you have to make your attempt or about to make the wrong decision, uh, you know, or in my case, you lost something. Uh, doesn't matter when it is that that core truth is threatened. That is when peace uh, make an alarm. So I want to uh, just kind of put a little bit practical in a, and by continuing with my story, I was on my way back to the coffee shop and, uh, uh, you know, to see if my, my, my phone was really stolen. And I had to withdraw from this bank of peace that Jesus left us with. And uh, what I found was in that moment, the Holy Spirit was telling me that it's not about, I, I wasn't anxious. I didn't lose my peace about a phone. I mean, to be honest, there are many shops with many phones. Phone wasn't actually the problem. What was really the problem in that moment was a core truth was written to my heart. And that is that I had a fear um, for lack. I was, I was fearing lack. I was fearing, I was upset about the fact that I don't have the means to, you know, take out another contract or to buy another phone. And I was um, a little bit upset with the fact that, uh, you know, God didn't protect or warn me about that. So in that moment, the Holy Spirit came and he said to me, he said, Louise, this is what is actually the reason why peace pressed the alarm. It's because a core truth was written in your heart. And the Holy Spirit reminded you because of my righteousness in Christ. It, 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 it included the whole package of God's promises. And those promises include that he's my provider and that he is my protector, regardless of what's happening in my life. And in that moment, I could withdraw from the bank of, of peace and I could become calm. My thoughts, my emotions, I could feel how they are joined together again, how they came together again. And I could feel the peace of God in my heart. 
you know, I have to add, uh, so I was stopping, you know, at the coffee shop, uh, you know, preparing my, you know, how I'm going to try and stay calm as I tell, I want to tell these people that I just want to check for my phone. So I walked in and I said to the cashier, uh, listen, I'm so sorry, I'm the person who just phoned and if I can just look in the bathroom and I couldn't even finish my sentence. And she said, oh yeah lovely sorry uh you know what we we got your phone and we just locked it into uh the safe and uh, so sorry we didn't have time yet to phone you you know in that moment was like oh my word you don't realize what you put me through but i was so glad that i, I almost kissed her if it wasn't for the glass separation because of covid uh, you know between the two of us um, otherwise, I probably would have would have kissed it. But in that moment, my peace became complete. But I was so glad that before I found my phone, I could withdraw from that bank of peace. And I think that is what God wants us to do. So for me, it was a phone. For you, it might be something different, something even worse. But it's to trust the Holy Spirit, to recognize the main truth that was threatened in that moment, and to, to allow the Holy Spirit to, for us to withdraw from that bank of peace and to, to allow God to come and bring that restoration. If we are willing to do that, if we are focused, if we are aligned to, you know, uh, uh, trusting God to withdraw from his bank of peace, we will find that it is possible, regardless of what is going on around us, to live lives filled with peace. Filled with peace. The last thing I want to focus on is uh, just peace with others. And uh, for this uh, I just want to quickly tell you about uh, not not long ago I was in a meeting and after you know the meeting basically in the last few minutes I just quickly want to make a, a small order arrangement and um, and I, I didn't realize that as I'm going to try and make my little order arrangement that you know this that's going to be conflict someone misunderstood me and and it became a little bit of a heated uh, moment and um, you know but good as we are we kind of uh, call it made peace, call it a day, and, and we walked off. And uh, later this, that afternoon, I was ready to to tell God, you know, my three reasons why I know I was right. I mean, you know, we, normally when you're in that place of, of you know, self righteousness, you know, you can just find reasons why you're right and why all the others are wrong. Um, but the more I tried to explain God why I was right. I could just hear the alarm going, you know, my peace guard pressed the alarm and uh, my soul was out of peace. So I could sense something was wrong. I wasn't hungry. I couldn't concentrate. You know, I had this pan pandemonium and this, you know, turmoil inside of my heart. And I just realized the only way that I'm going to, you know, get the peace guard to switch off that alarm is if I pick up the phone. So I picked up the phone and phoned this guy and, and I just said, listen, I'm so sorry. You know, for what happened uh, this morning, I didn't want to come across, uh, you know, in the way I did. And I just want to apologize. Um, and as we were talking, we realized that we were on the same page. Uh, we, we were actually more on the same page than any of the others in the room. Um, but because of a little misunderstanding, you know, it almost became a, a huge conflict. And by the end of that conversation, we could we could leave each other with more honor and with more respect for one another. And I could just realize, you know, how quickly the enemy would want to come and bring a distortion in our relationship, you know, with one another. But I could also sense the value of peace. And one thing I realized was that crack, you know, that the enemy wanted to bring between the two of us. What I found was when God meant that, it is stronger uh, than ever. God wants us to be peacemakers. Not, that, not just, um, you know... Uh, keeping the peace it's to to make peace and uh, the difference between that is not just to keep quiet and you know because keeping quiet and not saying anything is not making peace it, it will never be the the solution in every, any relationship god expect us to make peace romans 14 verse 17 was written in the context of a group of people who just found out you know their new freedom in christ and they were enjoying their bacon breakfast and their shrimp salads and um you know and, and caused a little bit of offense to the others who weren't there yet in their faith but in the same time the people who weren't there in their faith were of course caused offense for the people who you know was just enjoying uh their, their new freedom in christ and uh, Paul was actually speaking to them and he was telling them, listen, guys, it's not about the outward things. You have to remember that the main thing when it comes to the kingdom of God is firstly righteousness. In other words, to know that we are approved by the blood of Jesus Christ and we're welcome in an intimate relationship with God. 
And, but then secondly, for that approve, approval to, to, to flow over, to spill over to our relationship with others. And that is what the kingdom is all about. That is the main thing, um, you know, that defines the kingdom. The world look at us and um, oftentimes the peace that we have with one another will be the loudest gospel that we share. You know, when the world look at us, and that's why Jesus said, he said, the world will know that you are my disciples by the way that you love one another. So every single time that we're making effort, and you know, it's not easy, you know, to, to make peace. Sometimes you have to engage conflict. You have to hear things that, that is uncomfortable to hear. But if we are willing to step out and, and to be deliberate and intentional to make peace and to build strong relationships, to love one another, that might become the loudest that you will ever preach the gospel uh, to the world out there. Matthew 5 verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Making peace, and that, you know, uh, uh, that sons of God is, it speaks about heos, the mature sons of God. So peacemaking is a sign of spiritual maturity. It shows that you are mature if you are willing to step out and to make peace, you know, with, with someone else and to build a strong love relationship. Peace is not the absence of war, of conflict, as I said. It's sometimes so necessary to engage, um, which is uncomfortable and it's uneasy. But it holds a huge reward and it preach um, loudly to the world out there. Jesus gave us a bank account um, filled with peace and the Holy Spirit produces the fruit of peace in our hearts. A place that we can just withdraw from um, in, in tremendous ways. So I want to end up with this by asking, um, in which area do you need your peace guard to take its stand again today? In which area, if you have to really be honest with yourself, you realized my peace guard left his post for some other reason. Maybe you need God to restore your relationship with him today. Maybe there's someone you know you need to make peace with today. And as I'm speaking to you now, I... I do believe that the Holy Spirit will remind you, you know, if there's someone that you really to, to make peace with. Maybe it's a husband or a wife or a child. Maybe it's a mom or a dad. Maybe it's a neighbor or a friend. Maybe it's just someone, you know, that's working with you or going to church with you. But God is speaking to you about that person to make peace with them. Uh, what area is there that you can hear the alarm going off and you know that you are out of peace? And I'm going to pray now. I'm going to trust God to restore uh, peace in your heart today. So let's pray. Father, I want to come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I, I just sense um, so there's someone watching today that's really, really struggling, Lord, with, um, uh, with fear, um, uh, with depression. There's a deep sense of, of worthlessness, that I'm not good enough. And... Um, and it's just feeling that they have to work really hard just to survive uh, from day to day. And Lord, I just want to pray that you will come and that you will speak to that, that core truth uh, that was uh, replaced by a lie from the enemy. And just like the enemy wanted to let me know that God is not providing for me, um, that I'm actually on my own uh, the day that my cell phone was lost. I just really sense it for, for this particular person. Lord, that you are what you want to come and you want to restore truths. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you will just come and you will pick their hearts up. I pray, Lord, that you will raise them to a place that they will know that they are approved by you. They are loved by you, that they are accepted by you. And because you qualify them, that they are qualified to live, that they are allowed to live, that they qualify to live, that they are qualified for their callings. I thank you, Lord, for a new sense of boldness and a new sense of confidence that it's coming into their hearts, Lord. Lord, I want to pray for each and every one who's listening today, Lord, that you will restore peace in our hearts. Lord, that we will be the first to stand up and to make peace when there's conflict in the room. That we will be the first to stand up when there's a little bit of a misunderstanding or offense um, in, in one of our relationships, Lord. And I pray that through the way that we love one another, I pray that we will preach the gospel in the loudest and the clearest way that you intended for us to preach, Lord. 
I pray your blessing and your peace over each and every one. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. That was such a good word. I really want to encourage you right now, share it with a family member, a friend, somebody who needs to hear it. It is definitely going to bless them. And family, if you need prayer or you'd like to know more about our spiritual family, check us out at our website at enfc.co.za. Get to know us. Get to be part of the family. We are so excited to receive you. If you need prayer, please comment in the section down below. And we have a prayer team who's ready to pray with you right now. And then, thank you so much for joining us. We are excited for the next message next week. So tune in. We cannot wait to see you. Till next time.